Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for this opportunity to come together and study your word and all the slides that you are giving us. Please give us clarity of mind and help us to understand the things that are being uh, studied. Please give me the words to speak and uh, bless us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll just uh, continue this study we uh, started yesterday. Um, we will not repeat yesterday's uh, material. Uh, but we saw how the Lord uses numbers in his word in the chapters and, and the first numbers to uh, reveal or establish truth. Um, there's something uh, I believe he is not there for the nicety of it. Can you say it like that? It's, it has a purpose. Uh, he wants us to dig for these hidden treasures. Um, so that we can discover new truth, truth. and he is guiding us slowly uh, to, to, to deeper levels and uh, we must recognize this, we must recognize like what Daniel just uh, presented, we, we must recognize his truth, uh, we, 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 we must recognize his voice, sorry, and we will see that the evidence will become if it is not already, become overwhelming uh, to such a state that we cannot deny it. We must uh, act upon it and we must be able to, to yeah, really trust, put our weight uh, on, on these things that he is revealing to us. Um, yeah, so for example, we ha we were talking about the number 22 or 220 if you drop uh, we can drop zeros we saw uh, that the date July 18 sorry October 22 we saw that the date October 22 1844 Yes, in and of itself, uh, a symbology hidden in it. Uh, October being the tenth month, and ten times uh, twenty-two is two twenty. We saw that the year forty-four is uh, two times uh, twenty-two. Uh, referring to the 23, the restoring of the sanctuary and the restoring of the host, the 2300 and the 2520. So we see this, that this date is carefully picked by the Lord. It's no coincidence. And it's a sort of second witness, you can say, that this date is correct. There could be no other date uh, for the end of these prophecies that uh, that we know of, and it's yeah, it's um, comforting that uh, if we know this, because scholars and theologians will dispute this date, and if we do not have the confidence uh, that this date is correct, if we do not know the how. This date uh, was was uh, derived at. We are uh, we, we risk that we, we will fall. We will uh, be uncertain, and we, we will be put under pressure. And the danger is that we will uh, give up the twenty three hundred. That you will give up saying, this date. To understand the doctrinal reason for October 22nd, 1844, but even in the date itself as a second witness yes. through the 
Palmoni's numbers. Exactly, yes. And we so, need to have both of those to have confidence in it. Exactly, so we need to have both of these uh, truths that we uh, can be confident. So I think it's, I believe it's very important that we study these uh, uh, num numerical patterns and we will continue with this uh, a little bit more today. So we, we were at page five. Uh, we see here uh, an example of uh, Jacob who reflects uh, the 2520. In uh, the life of Jacob, we see the two 2520s that we know, one for Judah, one for northern Israel. He was 77 years old when he started to work for uh, Leah. Um, so his age here, 77, we see two sevens. Seven uh, represents uh, yeah, seven times symbolically, and the other seven, the other 25-20. So, uh, also, the number of years that he, he worked was seven years, first for Leah and then for Rachel. So there also we see two periods of, of seven times, representing again the 2520s. If you add up his age at the, at the different periods, so he was He was 77 years old when he started to work for, uh, for Leia. Seven years here. And seven years when he started to work for Rachel. So we have uh, Leia here. Rachel here. So when he was finished working for Leia, after seven years, he was uh, 84. And then again, after seven years, he was uh, 91. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, the two sevens here, uh, they both re represent one of the 2520s, right? Uh, seven year period year, also, we present the 2520 in the same year. And also, if you add the ages, 77 plus 84 plus 91, they add up to uh, 2520. 252? 252, yeah. Which, of course, is a, a symbol for the 2520. So you, you see all kinds of 2520 showing up. And it goes even further than that, because uh, Jacob had two sons with uh, Rachel, and he had ten sons with his, with uh, Leah and his other concubines, which also. Um, Connects with the two twenty-five twenties because one twenty-five twenty was for Judah, the two tribes, and the other twenty-five twenty for the northern kingdom, the ten tribes. So this is also yeah another demonstration of how the Lord uses patterns and numbers in his his word in, in history. In the Leviticus twenty-six, there's 
four times that the seven times is expressed. Right. So you can see them up there as well, with the seventy-seven yeah. and the seven and the seven. Yeah. So this will be one time, uh, two times, uh, three times. Oh no, I meant just with the sevens. Okay. Seven. Oh yeah, seven, 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 seven. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, a way of looking at it. So we put this in there as another demonstration for the of Pomoni, so to say. Uh, quickly go to the next example, which is X twenty-seven twenty-eight. Uh, can somebody read this? X twenty-seven twenty-eight. And signed it and find it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they signed it again and find it fifteen fathoms. Yeah, so this is just not example where the Twenty-five twenty is hidden uh, in this passage because um, it talks about the ship of Paul uh, almost running ashore, and they they measure the, the depth of the water. And the first uh, time they measure it, the water is 20 fathoms uh, deep. Maybe I should take another one. Okay. Yeah. There you go. The first time they measure it is. <laughs> Take it, the big one. It's 20 fathoms. And a fathom, as it says, is 72 inch. So, I don't have my calculator here, but 14. 20 times 72 would be 100. 44. Zero. Zero. Those are fours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe I can do better. <laughs> like this maybe. All right? Better so? Yeah. Uh, and again, they measure it for a second time. And they measure 15 fathoms times 72 inch would be? 1080. And if you add these numbers up, you again come to 2520. Does this passage in Acts tie in with some kind of message about the 2520? Uh, it's just an observation. Just an observation. Uh, yeah, and you see many of these examples. Uh, if you go to the next the, example, the next verse talks about four anchors getting cast out, so you would have four twenty-five twenties once again, four times in Leviticus twenty-six. Four anchors being cast out. So the First. 20 fathoms. A fathom, by the way, is the, your arm. Like at the cross of Christ, it says the uh, outstretched stretched arm. From hand to hand? Yes. So you could maybe see an image of the cross there. Interesting. The first one, the 20 fathoms, you can maybe relate to the 144,000. Yeah. Uh, the second, 15 fathoms. 15 fathoms was the height of the image in Daniel chapter 2. Okay. Sorry, no, Daniel chapter 3. Of, in the plain of Jura, so it's like the image of the beast. 
So you can you can connect them events. If they image the base, you can maybe connect that then to the Midnight Cry. Yeah. And this is being produced this in the, the time period of your Euclidon, of an east wind. And they're, uh, we're going to Malta. So mm -hmm. Malta means honey as well. Mm -hmm. And you can connect <coughs> that uh, message of honey to Josiah Litch's message. The, the, angel, the message is sweet. <coughs> the, yeah. the taste is honey. At the end of the 391 wow. years and 15 days. Yeah. And then you can also relate that to Ezekiel, uh, the honey in uh, Rev, uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, he tastes his honey and then he's, he's following that with a prophecy which indirectly is 391 and a half years. Right. And this is all connecting with the image of the beast, Islam's happening, there's honey, uh, it's all connected together. Right. <coughs> I think this is one of the, the pillars, Acts 27 of our movement. Mm -hmm. Uh, of this, of the midnight cry message, <clears throat> and you can connect that um, message then to Ezekiel right. in, in chapters four, chapter three, chapter one, and you connect that to Josiah Litch in Revelation nine fifteen. These are all connected. Uh, the issue, I think, with um, Tess and Preminder is yes, they, they'll accept this bit, um, but they won't go further into the connections of Acts 27 with the other verses which all connect it, which mm -hmm. I believe is the Midnight Cry message. They've, they've kind of accepted one foundation of the, of the Midnight Cry message and ran with it and just built on it, but mm -hmm. there's, a found it, there's a pillar that they haven't built on. They've rejected that. It's like a stone of stumbling. They're, mm -hmm. they're casting that aside and they're building this here pillar and it's just going to fall at some stage. So, okay. so, run that by again. You're you're <laughs> getting outside of his his numbers, mm -hmm. and you're giving us a lesson from the book of Acts where he's deriving these fathoms from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're saying, first off, a fathom is the the length of from hand to hand when Christ is, or anyone, but when Christ is stretched out on the cross. So the the one lesson is the cross. And the other one is the image of the beast, because in Daniel chapter three, the height of that image was ten hundred or a thousand and eighty fathoms. And you're saying that Malta, where the ship crashed, means honey, and the honey of the Millerite history was the message of Josiah Litch, because that's when the angel of Revelation ten comes down, and they're supposed to go and take the little book and eat it and it will be as honey in their mouth and from there you go to Ezekiel eating the honey and with Ezekiel we have the 391 and a half from those passages in Ezekiel which is connecting back with Josiah Litch so there's a direct connection there the 391 and a half is Islam and what did I leave out? The microphone when you tell me what I left out. Uh, Ezekiel 1 as well. Uh, you can connect that passage midnight yeah. as well. Acts 27, Acts 27, 27 mentions midnight as well. So it's all... Okay, connect so Acts 27... It's, yeah, you're, co you're connecting Acts 27. You can take that to Ezekiel 4, Ezekiel 3, Ezekiel 1, and to Revelation 9, 15 particularly, but maybe the, the whole second row there. They're just this is the midnight cry message. Permander Tess, yes, they've one pillar. They're they've, they're the building and not there. But the other passages which are connected with it, they have they've rejected that. You know, and it's become a stone of stumbling. Uh, they start it, they shut you down over it, and they and they've kind of mocked people who were juggling with numbers and so forth just through the, the periods after that. And then when it come when it came to Germany they had a meeting, says we want this shut down, and we agreed. We said, okay, we're not going to teach it anymore, and that was it. And I thought, well, Lord, if you're going to have to get this proclaimed, you're going to have to do something. You know, I, for as far as I know, there's no one else to preach it to. I had done my bit, and that was it. And then, um, as soon as about a few days after our FFA split off, and, uh, and a few days later, we didn't split off. <coughs> 
day split off. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then, then God had you go on your separate way, and then after a few weeks, uh, you're you're picking this up again. It's like they, no matter what, they, they just keep on stumbling over it. They can't seem to to get rid of this message. They, they keep tripping over it, so it become a stumbling block to them, and um, and they can't do it. There's nothing in you know, uh, Acts chapter five verses. 38 and 39, uh, you have Gamaliel saying, if this message uh, is, is of man, it will come to naught, but if it is of God, there's no, they can't do anything again, about it, you can't do anything against it, you, you know, at least you fight against God, and that's what they're, I believe they're doing, and fighting uh, the, the message of Ezekiel 4 as being part of the Midnight Cry message, and uh, it's just, they, they can't, uh, they try and shut it down, they thought they maybe had it shut down, that was it. But it's just, um, God says, no, I want this year proclaimed. And, and that's what he's doing now. He, he's, he's uh, no matter, I, th I think if they, if they didn't fight against it, um, it probably would have been just, you know, we, we, were, we weren't really doing that much about it. We were just maybe speaking to a few people here and there. But it seemed to be the more they, they, they kind of tried to suppress the 391 message with the Josiahs, um, it just uh, seemed to be dead, but it's just it's just sprung up again, and it's now being proclaimed to be more to more people now. This, this study will may be made available on uh, YouTube. Yeah, maybe you should present it. Yeah. I just had a thought. Just one. <laughs> yeah. In regards to this twenty fathoms, fifteen fathoms. And it's showing us the 2520s. So my thought is, why would the Lord show us the 2020? I mean, the 2520, and in Acts 27. And now we're going to Jeff's question: Does it have some relation to Acts 27? Yeah. And I'm saying it should. it should. Yeah, of course. And I'm saying if you go to verse 21, it talks about that they didn't adhere to Paul's previous warning: don't take this ship out. A port. Yeah. So it's a type of judgment. So I'm saying the Lord wouldn't be showing us a 2520 if it didn't mean. Yeah. In relation to. If it didn't have a connection with the context of the passage. Yes. I agree. Yeah. But it, but it goes uh, beyond the scope of this study to. Uh, to go. To into too much detail in, in this, uh, yeah. but it's worthwhile to keep moving forward. Yeah, on your stuff. Yeah, I will. We'll interrupt you as needed. Okay, <laughs> but in, interesting stuff that uh, Stephen just shared. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to show the the way the Lord is using uh, His Word and to show us uh, truth. Um, having said that, we can go to the next example, the tabernacle. We see, in, uh, we will see another evidence of the twenty-five twenties hidden in uh, the, the tabernacle in the temple that Moses built. I will draw it, try to try it on the board. So if we draw the tabernacle that Moses uh, built, we learn that the, 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 the measurements were as follows. We can read this in Exodus 27, verse 16 and 18. Maybe we can read it this first. Can somebody read this? Exodus 27, verse 16 and 18. Was it 17 and 18? Yeah, 16 and 18. 16? And 18. 16 and 18. Yeah. And as, I mean, uh, as for the gate of the court, 
shall be, I'm sorry, and for the gate of the court shall be an hanging of twenty cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework, and their pillars shall be four, and their sockets four. In verse 18? Yeah, so first uh, the gate was 20 cubits, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can uh, write a 20 here. Okay. You can read on. Verse 18? Yeah. The length of the court shall be an hundred cubits, and the breadth fifty everywhere, and the height five cubits of fine twined linen, and their sockets of brass. Yeah, so the length was a hundred cubits and the breadth fifty cubits, right? So if we convert this to, to inches, we, we see the following. A hundred inch is, I mean one inch, one cubit is, how many inch is the question? It doesn't say here. Uh, 18, one cubit was 18 inch? Yes. Yeah, uh, so one cubit is 18 inch. So 100 cubits will be, maybe with another color. Then of course is 18 hundred inch. Uh, put it like this. Fif Fifty cubits would then be nine hundred inch. And twenty cubits would be thirty six. Zero. Oh, sorry. Zero. And if we add this uh, Or if we um, calculate this, the, the circumference, the, we have here also, of course, an 1800 inch for the length, and another 50, uh, 900 for the breadth. Adding this up together, we get 1800 plus 1800 plus 900 plus 900 which makes uh, five, four. No, oh, other way around. Other way around. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, Fifty-four hundred. Right. Is, is this right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's correct. Um, but we have to uh, I forgot something I think the take away the gear yeah we have to leave out the gate which is 20 which is 360. Uh, 360 we end up with so minus 360 we end up with Five zero uh, four zero. Yeah. And so that's, that, that, that is this uh, circumference uh, without the gate. And we see then that we can split the sanctuary in, in, in two sections. If you uh, split it in half. And this is, of course, uh, the, the north side, this is the east side, this is the south side, this is uh, the west side. If you split it in half like this, there are the distance of the, of the upper part of the no northern half is exactly uh, at 25, 20 inch. And uh, the length of the, s the southern part is also exactly 
25, 20 inch. <coughs> and if you, if, you, yeah, if you divide this number 50, 40, 5040 by 2, uh, of course it's uh, 25, 20. For the Northern and Southern Kingdom. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Because there were two 2520s, one for the Northern Kingdom, one for the Southern Kingdom. Have you looked at Lyndon Nettleton's work on the sanctuary? No? There's a sister, used to be involved with this movement, that has a book on the 2520, where she goes in the sanctuary. The 2520 is... All over it the place. Permeate, permeates yeah. the sanctuary. Yeah. So this is just one example of uh, the entire 20 being. Uh, along with the other numbers. Yeah, along with the other numbers, of course. Are in the sanctuary. Yeah. So is this clear? Right. Let me go quickly to the next page. This is something uh, that Jeff already dealt with to some extent. The Simply because I knew you were going to be a little bit more complex. <laughs> well, I didn't intend to be uh, uh, more complex than, I. than, than you. Uh, I just wanted to show the occurrences of the 70s uh, in this history, uh, which is the only thing uh, I wanted to point out, that the Lord works with, with structures, with, with uh, num num number, uh, number patterns, uh, which is uh, important to, to understand and, and to see and to recognize. So I don't want to spend much, too much time on this uh, point. Uh, again, yeah, Jeff elaborated on this already. But as you can see, there are many 70s present, and especially the, one, the 140 for Jehoiachin, Chin, uh, symbolizing uh, doubling, symbolizing uh, the midnight cry which we will see again in this study. We will see Joya Chin again as a waymark on the line of Ezekiel. So I'll tell you this uh, up front. So if we go to page seven of our notes. Just to give some more examples of uh, numerical patterns in Matthew 1822 we see uh, the number 490 uh, Again, we see another period of 490 consecutive to this period of 490. So there are two periods of 490 being described uh, that we are going to, to read. In Matthew 18.22, can somebody read this? Um. I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. It's good that you invert to read verse 21 with that, because it puts the right context on it. It says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, till seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, and I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Yeah. So the question is about probationary time. How how long do I forgive my my brother? Yeah. 
Ja, so Jesus is stelling als uh, op Peter uh, until 70 times 7 um, which is 490 and this number has meaning, this number refers to a period of uh, probation and that's uh, what is it, what is described uh, below? We recognize a period of 490 years uh, from the um, first king of Israel to their captivity in Babylon. So uh, I should write this. This is also uh, a f familiar uh, ground. You should all know this, of course. So there is Saul, King Saul, starting in uh, 1097 BC. And it's a period of 590 years until they are taken captive into uh, Babylon in 607 BC. And we recognize that after this, there is another period of 490 years, starting from the moment that they went out of Babylon, they came out of exile. In 457 BC, which is the the moment that the the, the last week of Daniel, uh, sorry, the yeah, the, 70 the 70 weeks of Daniel start, of course, and the 70 weeks again is 490 400, years, which end in. 34 AD. So we see two consecutive periods of uh, probation. Um, which is being referred to by Christ in this verse. In, which we just read in Matthew 18, uh, 22. So just another example of numbers being used by the Lord in his word. And the next uh, point it says uh, the year Jeff also already think I mentioned this um, yeah. yeah just come your notes Shall we skip it or say it, repeat it again? You we'll, we'll repeat it uh, just shortly. The day of principle is being derived from Numbers 14.34 and Ezekiel 4.6. And Josiah Litch proved the day of principle to be correct by his prophecy on the Ottoman Empire, which was fulfilled on August 11, 1840. And if we add up the chapter numbers of Numbers and Ezekiel and the passage numbers, we get 14 plus 4, which is 18, and 34 plus 6, which is 40. And you get 1840, the year that the day of principle was proven to be correct. So that should be obvious. Um, 
going to the next uh, point, the third row. If you take the year 1840, where the second row uh, just ended, and multiply it by the symbol for Islam, that Jeff already explained uh, in his presentations, the symbol for Islam being 391.5, we get the number uh, 720360, and if we, we divide that number by the, the symbol of the day, a principle, 360, it gives us 2001, the beginning of the third row. Uh, Jeff already gave this uh, example. So we just uh, repeated this uh, very quickly. Uh, next point, Ezekiel 4, 4 to 6. Um, talks about uh, Ezekiel that had to lie on his left side and his right side, pointing towards the destruction of uh, Jerusalem. He had to lay on his, he had to lie on his uh, left side um, for 390 days, which in uh, in his time was he started to receive this vision, this prophecy on the fifth day of the fourth month, right? Fifth day, fourth month, which in the year uh, 592 BC was, according to our calendar, the was it Julian or Gregorian? Gregorian? Yeah, to our calendar, the Gregorian calendar was July 21. July 21. So, this is where he started to lie on his left side. Uh, and he had to lie on his left side each night f for 390 days. So, if you Proceed 390 days. You end on August 15. Five ninety one BC. Can you get your starting point there from Ezekiel one one? Yes. Okay. Ezekiel one one mentions uh, the fifth day of the fourth month. And when you get to Ezekiel 4, it's the same vision, so it's happened at the same point in Yes, time. exactly. And we then notice that August 15 uh, shows up, which uh, is a familiar date for the Millerites, uh, for us, of course, uh, and is a symbol for the Midnight Cry. But that's why I wanted to to show this that dates dates become symbols which we see over and over again and also July 21 is an important symbol uh, which was midnight in the time of the Millerites right it was when Samuel Snow presented we not cry in the Boston Cathedral. Tabernacle. Boston Tabernacle. Yeah. Do you say that from July 21st to August 15th, there's he's laying on his side for 390 days, so it ends on August 15th. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's Boston and Exeter, Correct. illustrated in Ezekiel 4. 
Boston and Exeter, yeah, correct. So we will see these symbols, these dates over and over again in this study. That's why it's being uh, uh, included in the study as, a, as an example. Um, so we, we've now seen uh, s several numbers and patterns and symmetries. You don't say the 40 days on his right side also end on August 15th. Yeah, you, you can say that uh, when after 290 days he has to lay on his uh, right side but then he's looking back to August fifth, uh, 15, of course. So I don't know how to <laughs> to do all this, but well, I wasn't trying to make you illustrate. I was just noticing that in that vision, both of them end on August 15th, yeah. which is the midnight cry. So there's a doubling there. Yeah, exactly. Ezekiel, he can't lay on his left side and his right side at the same time. Exactly. So he's just to illustrating it uh, in the best way he did, uh, that he can. Yeah. And sort of looking back at the 15th of August. Yeah. It's sort of, as like, there's just, as, as, as a focal point. Yeah. Yeah, so from July 18, 21, he's looking forward to August 15, mm -hmm. and then he has to lay on his, his, his uh, right side. Uh, which would end on September September 23 September 23 so he's laying on his uh, on his right side so he's looking back to August 15 so that's how you could illustrate it so you <coughs> so you see a doubling August 15 August 15 and doubling symbolizing of course the midnight cry all right yes I'm understanding Jeff's thought in regard to Boston and Exeter, that was a doubling. He presented it in Boston and then in Exeter, is that correct? No. No. That's well, correct what you said. But my point was, is that in the 390 days on one side and then on the 40 days on the other side, you both, both of them will manifest August 15th. So both the 390 and the 40 when you lay them out in his history, they both come to August 15th, so August 15th is doubled by his, his illustration. Okay. Yeah, but Stephen can explain that. Um, well, I was just gonna add another aspect, just noting the, the numbers 390 and 40, there just seems to be like numerically, there, there's a quite a, an interesting link between them, and that the 390 days equates to 55 weeks and 5 days, and the 40 days equi equates to 5 weeks and 5 days. So it just seems to be a, a connection there with them numerically. And to get, add it up together, it's uh, 430 days, and that equates to 1 year, 2 months, and 3 days. So maybe like a it just seems like a one, two, three sort of connection there as well. <coughs> nice. All right, we will go to the next uh, page, page eight. It talks a little uh, bit about calendars, which is a very uh, important subject in this study, but uh, yeah, I heard Jeff mention uh, that you make use of seven calendars, or even uh, even more. Rabbinical. Rabbinical. Biblical. Biblical. Gregorian. Julian. 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 Islamic. Islamic. French Revolution. Yeah, and the, what did they call it? The Re Republican? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
think is the Karaite sort of similar to the, the biblical? There's maybe there's a slight difference, I think. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it's quite similar. But uh, there. But I've always also heard recently that someone's thrown in the mix the Aztec calendar or the Mayan calendar. Yeah. But I want I want to <laughs> I want to comfort the people. We 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 will not, we will not make use of uh, that many calendars in a year, yeah. just the four, so people don't have to worry too much. And it's on a very basic level that we make use of the calendars. We are not concerned with the equinoxes or the uh, the crescents of the moon or this embolismic years. So nothing like that. So it's very easy for everybody to understand if they are willing to put their mind to it. So I want to take away that concern. It's pretty much yeah straightforward, <coughs> but. Um, we will, we will make use of the, and the Millerite had to make use of the Jewish, Julian, Biblical, and Gregorian calendar, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we will do exactly the same thing here. No more, no less. Uh, so the Gregorian calendar came into existence since 15, 1582 A.D. by Pope Gregorian. Gregory. 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 Pope Gregory was his name. Um, and the difference, because until that year, the Julian calendar was uh, being used. And the difference between them is very narrow, very small. In it's the difference is in, in, in the calculation of the of the leap year. And you, you can look it up on, on Wikipedia, but the Julian calendar adds a leap year every four years. And so does the Gregorian calendar, except if it is divisible by uh, one hundred or something like that. Uh, and there is another uh, another. They have to divide it by another variable. variable. But th the difference is, is, is very little uh, in the way that every two hundred year years, every two hundred years, the difference. The Julian calendar. Uh, goes one day behind, right? So that's the only difference between the Gregorian and Julian calendar. Uh, the rabbinical calendar, by the way, the Julian calendar came into existence since 45 BC, as it says here. The rabbinical calendar was uh, yeah, gradually replaced by a mat mathematically one, uh, calculated one, uh, and it's, it's not accurate uh, anymore uh, compared to the biblical calendar. The biblical calendar is the only correct uh, calendar which Theodore uh, developed and has proven to be correct. And yeah, the difference between them, uh, what can I say, is um, yeah, how would we describe the difference between the biblical and rabbinical? Uh, the rabbinic calendar starts their new year, um, whenever it's the, the new moon nearest, the spring equinox. equinox, and that can be even before the spring equinox. Yeah. And uh, the biblical calendar only after would, would always be the the new moon after the spring equinox, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. So, 
That's the only difference between rabbinical and biblical calendar. So I'm not even an expert on, on these things, but uh, I understand uh, as much as the rest of you. So having, put the, uh, having uh, this in place is... Uh, important to combine these calendars now and uh, see the symbols that are uh, being, being, being shown to us. There is a website, by the way, where we can compare all these different calendars, the Gregorian, Julian, and Biblical, and Rabbinical. I've put the link in this document. And everybody can just play around a little and see how these things work out. So I put an example here. October 22nd, 8044, Gregorian would be October 10, Julian. And it would show up as the 10th day of the 7th month, Biblical, and the 9th day of the 8th month, Rabbinical. So there you have one day, one point in time, identified by four different calendars. So that's... All four of those days would carry the same symbolic, prophetic meaning. Uh, if they have two or three witnesses. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where we know October 22nd represents the Day of Atonement. Exactly. At basic level. Yeah. But on the Julian calendar, it was October 10th. Yeah. So if we can see a second witness to October 10th having some kind of alignment with the Day of Atonement, then we know that just like October 22nd is a symbol of the Day of Atonement, so is October 10th. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what we're comparing them for. Is we're trying to identify right. what dates in e any calendar represent specific waymarks. Right, exactly. Thank you. And Theodore commented, the Julian calendar every fourth year is a leap year in which February has 29, not 28 days. But in the Gregorian years, divisible by 100 are not leap years unless they are also divisible by 400. Right. That was the extra variable I was uh, looking for. Should I repeat it or? <laughs> So if I understood you, do you know it? No. C can you read it again? Read it loud. Okay. Theodore Turner says the Julian calendar every fourth year is a leap year in which February has 29, not 28 days, but in the Gregorian years, divisible by 100, are not leap years unless they are also divisible by 400. Theodore Turner says the Julian calendar every fourth year is a leap year in which February has 29 days, not 28 days, but in the Gregorian years, divisible by 100, are not leap years unless they are also divisible by 400. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> email Theodore. Yeah. <laughs> what what it means is that once a date has a prophetic characteristic attached to it upon the testimony of two or three, mm -hmm. that that date becomes a symbol that we can look for in any history, and it can those symbol symbolic dates can occur in any of these calendars after right. if they get established. Yeah. yeah. Even if we don't understand all the math of the var and variations of the calendars. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so, how do you d divide a year by 400? What year has 400 to divide into? But anyway. But, but, but yeah. Uh, I'll see my time is up but I would like to finish this uh, page uh, there's an example here that demonstrated August 15 which we uh, shown, uh, shown on the board it symbolizes the midnight cry so we want to look how uh, this can be a symbol um, 
So we can write August 15 as, as follows. It's very, very simple. It's the 15th day of the 8th month. August is the 8th month. So we, we could write it like uh, the Bible does. It's the 15th day of the 8th month. Day for day, D for day, and M for month. But you're, you're taking that from the, a Gregorian or a Julian, August 15th, right? You're not telling us that that's the 15th day of the 8th month in the biblical calendar. No, this... This is Julian, Julian date. Okay. And I'm just writing it, it again as a Julian date, but in another format. But that is the format that typically we're going to use for the biblical calendar. Yeah, the Bible uses, the Bible doesn't use January, February, you know, it just says there's so many dates on so many months. First day, first month, then day, seven month. And we write this August 15 in the same way, 15 day of the eighth month. And if you would convert this to a number, you would have the number uh, 158. I think we can all see that. So you, you just drop the D, you drop the M, you have the number 158. So 158 can symbolize uh, this date, August 15. That's, that's all there is to it. So if we encounter this number somewhere in the Bible, or in the spirit of prophecy, or in, in a historical event, we have license to compare it, or to place it uh, at the midnight cry, and see what comes out of it, if it is relevant or not. Sometimes it's not relevant. Yeah, sometimes it's not relevant, and you discard it. But sometimes it, it is, and it should encourage you to, to dig uh, deeper and investigate further. Uh, yeah, one example, a uh, nice example that Jeff also demonstrated, is First Kings 12, the history of uh, Jeroboam. Maybe we can read it quickly. First Kings 12. 33? Yeah, 32 and 33. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. In yeah, you, you can stop there. So you, you see the date mentioned here, fifteenth day of the eighth, of the eighth month. The eighth month of, on the fifteenth day is the same. So we see there, uh, how does this is say, eight month, 15 day, yeah. But it's in two verses, so it's double. Yeah, and, and again in verse 33, Go ahead. I, I read it myself. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in battle the 15th day of the eight month. So two times it mentions the, the 15th day of the eight month. And this date is biblical. I'll put the the B from biblical. And this one was uh, uh, Julian. But you see the same number uh, showing up. So in, symbolically, this represents uh, midnight, right? A midnight cry. August 15. Can you see that? Yeah. You too? Right. So that's all there is to it. Uh, and well, this one you can accept because it's got internal evidence that it is also speaking about the midnight cry with the doubling. Yeah. And the see. prophecy that comes afterwards, oh, altar, altar. Yeah. So should be obvious that it is mentioned twice in verse 32 and verse 33. So it's a strong hint that we should place this event at the midnight cry. 
which we, we will do later on in the study. <coughs> uh, another quick example, August 11, uh, Josiah Litch. It was fulfilled on uh, August 11, 1840, the prophecy of Josiah Litch of the Ottoman Empire. Um, came into fulfillment on August 11, 1840, which, if I write this uh, in, in a biblical fashion, is the 11th day of the 8th month, uh, August uh, 11. When the Ottoman Empire lost its power, And the, the, the interesting thing is that, well, the, 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 how do you say, the, the skeptics, they say the Ottoman Empire didn't really end on August 15, uh, on August 11, 1840. It went on to, it continued on, and it, it, it slowly uh, Disintegrated, so to say, yeah. But the, the interesting thing is that the Ottoman Empire really ended, stopped existing on November 1st, November 1, 1922. This is when the Ottoman Empire really uh, ceased to exist. And this is the Gregorian date. I put the G for Gregorian. <coughs> but interesting is this, is that the this date, if you convert it to the biblical date, so this is also a Gregorian date, August 11, AD 40. But if we convert this date to a biblical date, it shows that it is November 1, 1922, is the 11th day of the 8th month. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. so it's, the, it's the same date as the date that Josiah Lich predicted to be the end of the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting. Uh, Detail. So the Panion is a progressive event with a beginning and an end. Mm. B? Amen. Yeah. So again, this is biblical, it's B for biblical. So you see that the Gregorian and the biblical, they match. So in a sense, that Josiah Lech was right, and that the Ottoman Empire would fall on the 11th day of the 8th month. Amen. Yeah. He just got the, he didn't the understand year. the, the <laughs> the gradual procession that it was going to be over an 82-year period. Right. Amen. Mm. And we also have a, an 82-year period, um, I think, with... I'll have to check it out. I'll not say it first. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so another thing, um, I'm yeah. just seeing the 11th day of the 8th month, we can maybe take that symbol as 118 days as well. And uh, so we have... The, the understanding of Ezra 7-9, mm -hmm. the, the first day of the first month, is uh, Ezra leaves uh, to go to Jerusalem and he arrives right. there on the, the first day of the fifth month. Right. And normally we, we would plug in 120 into that there period, it's like prophetically. Uh, but in the biblical days, actual number of days, it's 118 days. Mm -hmm. So there you're seeing you can maybe then take that 118 as uh, on, on the 11th day of the 8th month, taking that as being a symbol of 118. Right. And so you, you can plug you can plug on plug in that the 11th day of the 8th month. Yeah. To to the midnight cry period of the f the first day of the fifth month. So you maybe you can see like a a, a connection there. Yeah. With the midnight cry and the Ottoman Empire with the, the restraint there, the Islam. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. He mentioned uh, 118, and um, 
from April 19th, 1844, that is the first day of the first month, to August 15th is 118 days. That's what he said. Oh, he but go say. ahead. Oh, and then on 9-11 is the first day of the first month. There's not 118 there, but there's an But, eight. but that period of time will take you to the midnight cry. Take you to, yeah. The, as a prophetic symbol, whether it's 118 or 120. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah he said that. So, sorry. Double. That's all right. <laughs> Double. <laughs> Double. <laughs> Amen. So, the very last example. Uh, no. Yeah. I was thinking of it while he was saying, so I wasn't listening. <laughs> I was putting it together, so that's why mm -hmm. I wasn't. All right. I do have one sometimes. The very last example, uh, Jeff also already demonstrated, was about the letter of Samuel Snow on the, the real date of the cru crucifixion of Christ, which was. Um, the publication of the letter was on May 2nd. I'll put it uh, May 2nd. He pub he, he, uh, this letter was publicized. Uh, about the crucifixion, the date of the crucifixion of Christ. But he did, not, he, did, he did not know that this date, the biblical date, was the 14th day of the first month, which is, of course, the date that Christ was crucified in the year 31 AD. Which, of course, is no coincidence, and we see that the Lord is using uh, calendars and numbers for us to uh, discover and we feel truths, important truths, to us. So that's all for today. Uh, if there are any questions? I'd just like to add that uh, I mentioned the, the midnight cry for our time period, and I mentioned that there are some key uh, passages, and there was one I forgot. Uh, I mentioned Acts 27, Ezra 1 to 4 uh, chapters. 1 to 4, Revelation 9, and then I forgot about the, the First Kings 13. You can tie in the name of Josiah there. And then, and then the fulfillment of that passage is in 2 Kings um, as well. I think it's, I'd have to check the, the chapter and stuff, but you can tie them, tie them into what our Midnight Cry message is for, our, for us. Thank you. Shall we close? Father, Father in heaven, thank you for the study and thank you for helping to us to understand these things and please help us to dig for these treasures and, and, and jewels that you are re revealing to us. Help us to get closer to, to you and to, to the truth up to us to apply these, these symbols and these numbers, these patterns that you are, that you are revealing to us, that uh, you may get a knowledge of these important truths, Lord, and help us to prepare for the crisis that is before us, help us to firmly be grounded, grounded in the foundations so that we are will be able to stand, Lord, and help us to prepare our characters. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.